There it is, right there. From Human Video Co. and Tyler Wells, he says, hey guys, have some exciting news. You guys won the Film Fest. Such a great film. The team should be proud. A couple months ago, Matty Apoya's video came up and he said, we want you to make a short film up to three minutes on a human story. And I thought, I'm gonna make a short film for this. Uh, I've got a little bit of time. I've got an idea. I don't have a script. I don't have a crew. I don't have the actors. I don't have anything, but we're gonna make this. So we did, so many new connections and relationships made that it was you know, totally worth it. Today I just wanna talk about taking opportunities, learning from them, win or lose, success or failure. What do you do with that? So let's get into it. So the first thing that I learned from this project is one, to celebrate the wins, but you don't wanna be arrogant or boastful, like, hey, look, we won, because like, art is so subjective. It's not necessarily a contest. It's just an excuse to get out there and put your best foot forward. But then learn from the failures, or learn from the things that you messed up with. And uh, were there a lot of failures on set? Not any major ones, but there was a lot of things that I did learn. And before I'm gonna let it get me discouraged, I'm gonna make it an opportunity to get better. The next thing I'd say is take risks. You learn by failing, you learn by experience, you learn by testing and, and, and getting out there. I'd also say don't shortchange your production. Even though I had like next to nothing of a budget, I mean our budget was like $1,500 and hey, that's something, right? But I needed a lot of friends, people who are willing to sort of sacrifice, you know, some inconvenience uh, to see something come to life. I think that's beautiful. So make sure you craft the story that is within reason, that you can make happen. And that brings me to my next point, which is focus on the depth of your story rather than the scope of it. The best filmmakers out there will do this. They're thinking about the depth of their characters, the depth of their, uh, the music score, the editing, the composition. It's saturated with uh, you know, lived experiences, and it's just oozing with humanity, like in the story, it's so much there. And you, you may not even like the story, but they're really focusing on the depth of it rather than the scope, like these big action sequences. Another thing I'd say is working on the pitch uh, to your friends, like crafting a really good mood board, a really good script summary or log line, having a really good pitch deck will make all the difference. Having some visuals that people can get behind, get inspired by, because if that's not there, don't expect your DP to just like come up and just produce some magic. They will get behind you if you have a clear vision that connects and resonates with them. The next thing I learned was big crew doesn't mean big results. Now, I love the crew that we had and it was awesome. Uh, and we were able to do more with a bigger crew than just like a one, two person setup. But don't think that having a big crew just means that it's just gonna be a flawless production, that you're still needing to assemble the right people in the right places. Even though we have a big crew, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're having like better value. Like each person has to dedicate their craft and their skill to raise that bar to the top, and they did, and that was really cool to see. One thing that filmmakers are notorious for is not budgeting enough for time, and this is one thing I learned was to budget liberally for time. And uh, you really, really gotta work through this, and your first AD will help you with that. Uh, but thinking through your time and the only way you know how long something will take is experience. The next thing I learned was basically three things that will make or break your production. And that is locations, acting, and production design. So we had some incredible locations that we were able to find that just fit the story. Incredible meaning like there wasn't this grand landscape or the scope wasn't any anything big, but it fit the scene and the setting of the story. The acting was amazing. A little tension in my voice. I'm talking to a stranger on a phone that I found in the wall. Andrew Breedlove just knocked this uh, role out of the park. Like it was so good. Uh, like his humor, his timing, his understanding of the character, his relation uh, to me as a director was just perfect. So the locations were good, the acting, and then the production design. 
Now, we were fortunate to have a house that was already set, basically, but we added some stuff in the kitchen, some stuff on the refrigerator. I brought some stuff from my kitchen and put it on the counters in the background. A lot of stuff, uh, world building for filmmakers is production design. So every component is important. What the costuming is, what the set dressing is, what the props are, the locations, and the acting. All of that comes together to make this cohesive story that sells the reality of what you're trying to share. Another thing that is so important is creating a detailed shot list. Uh, we had a pretty meticulous shot list that everyone could understand, whether it was the camera focal length or just the direction of the camera and breaking down every scene and how long it would take to do every shot. It's so easy to miss an insert shot or to miss a reaction shot or reverse shot. It's so simple to, to miss that and it kind of botches the whole short film story in the edit and then it just makes you feel like an amateur. Another thing is having a good script. Now, now, of course, this is my subjective view of this, but I really worked at dialing in the script and making it kind of like Tarantino-esque uh, in terms of prose, like just making it feel alive and not just um, like a blueprint, because I know a script is a blueprint, but I didn't want it to feel like you're just you know, reading data. I wanted it to feel like a story, like you're reading a book. If you get a good script, this will set the precedent for the rest of your film. And lastly, I would say the thing that I learned is that a recipe for a good short film is something that is a high concept. Now, what does a high concept mean? It means something really absurd, like having a phone ring inside your wall. It's something that's unique and original and high concept films play really well or those stories play really well with short films. Like I had this idea for a short film that I made and that was this guy received an anonymous message kind of like in this supernatural way through his mailbox. Like it just like, you know, letters kept filling his mailbox out of nowhere. Like that's unique and different and it doesn't make any sense, but it's an interesting story. So having a high concept really kind of soups it up a bit, builds it up and makes it a little more interesting. I would only encourage you to get out there and do the same. And that's what this channel exists for. It exists to help you help other filmmakers out there that are kind of like that one man band, that two man band to make those connections, to build a community, to grow in this aspect of like, how do you tell a good story? That's what this YouTube channel exists for. So if you have any other questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.